is Whitechapel High Street, come with me cameraman. As you can see, it leaves much to be desired. In the week, this place is, dare I say, a complete dump. We have a lot of food stalls here and it's, it usually looks and smells a bit of a mess. But just past this point here, around that disgusting looking modern building, is The Blind Beggar, which is one of the most famous pubs in the East End due to its connotation with the Crays. What with the murder committed by Ronnie Cray having happened in here, the one that saw him locked up, basically for good. So let's go and have a look. The pub itself actually sits on the corner between Bethnal Green and Whitechapel. So it sits on the road that people would know as Whitechapel and it's actually on the corner which would lead you down to Bethnal Green, you'll see in just a moment. So, just before we enter the beggar, here's a nice... I've showed, actually filmed this property before when I was doing a documentary on anarchism in the East End. And that's a nice way for you to enter your local NHS clinic, isn't it? No political agendas here though, ladies and gents. Anyway, as you can see, where that bus is turning, that would lead you down to Bethnal Green. And this is Whitechapel. And here is a blind beggar. This is... Now, this out here is where there was a scene just after the murder where the police were investigating because the locals and the eyewitnesses refused to testify. It looks very much the same as it did back then. at the blind beggar. Come with me, cameraman. Just over here, you will see a reminder in picture form of just what happened and who was involved. With a picture, coming a little bit closer, cameraman, of a picture of the pub at the time. The Blind Beggar public house is where Ronnie Cray shot rival gang member in cold blood as he was drinking in the saloon bar. The rival member being George Cornell. Turn around for me, cameraman. And now just before I go and get some food and a drink, I'll show you quickly where it took place. So come with me. George Cornell was stood right here with a drink on this bar. Just after allegedly saying that, quote, look who's here. So he was lent here, like so. Went in from that door, came Ronnie. Let's get a drink. So on the 9th of March in um, 1966, he was stood here, George Cornell, who was a member of the famous Richardson's gang, was stood here with his friend Albie Woods. Ronnie Cray has marched in, walked straight round this bar here, and shot George directly in the forehead. He didn't die here, he slumped here, and died later in hospital. But the interesting thing about George is who he worked for. Now, many EastEnders give a lot of credit to the Crays, but the truth was, if you know your stuff, the Richardsons, who were their mortal enemies, were far more dangerous and remained far more dangerous after both family names became less famous. The Richardsons were multi-millionaires off of the scrap trade. They were scrap metal merchants, well-known villains. And George Cornell, you see, if you was to watch the film on the craze, they'd show that George Cornell uh, called Ronnie a puff because puff was a renowned, uh, Ronnie was a renowned homosexual. But what they don't tell you is what most EastEnders know or claim, which is that George Cornell had given Ronnie a beating in a straightener. He'd beaten him in a fire. 
therefore the shame on Ronnie from knowing financial... I mean, let's have it right, the Crays were making, in comparison with the Richardsons, a few hundred quid in comparison. Obviously, they weren't just making a few hundred quid, but if you compare with true villains in the scrap game, you know, the Crays were dressed in suits, knock about a Barber Windsor, and try and look like celebrities, whereas the Richardsons were genuine underground mobsters. And this heavily ate away at the ego of Ronnie, who was suffering from severe mental illness. As a result, he could not let it go. He couldn't let the beating, the alleged beating of himself go, or being called a gay boy by a renowned hard man like George Cornell. And that is what resulted, we all believe, in this shooting, which may not have happened had the straight, the fight not have happened, and the, what you would call today, homophobic slurs. Anyway, George Cornell was buried in South London in recent years. His grave was vandalised. So it looks like his feud didn't die. Think for yourself. So another key player in the shooting was a man named Ian Barry, ex-military. You've really not left me much uh, to work with here at all. Um, now, Ian Barry, the rumour is, no pressure, the rumour is that he had no idea the shooting was going to take place, which the witnesses they wouldn't testify in court, but the story goes that by his reaction, he didn't know that was going to happen. And the giveaway to this is the fact that when Ronnie took the shot, he seemed shocked and let three shots into the ceiling to warn those around not to say what they saw. So the belief is he may not have even walked into this pub had he known what Ronnie was going to do. The rumour is Ronnie told no one. And as a result, he was given 20 years in prison. And I bet he never thought that shooting three bullet holes in the ceiling would have given him 20 years in prison. Oh, my allergies, they're awful, honestly. At first though, because no one would agree to testify, the government or the police were forced to actually release Ronnie. And that comes from a, the days of the code of silence, which are long since gone. That's what I mean, there's three yellows there, see that? Three yellows. Oh yes. The saying goes in England, ladies and gents, that if you are good at Paul, it's the sign of a, of a troublesome youth. When Ronnie first walked in, the saying goes that George said, look who's here, in an act of slight irony, because he knew trouble was about to kick off, and to warn the barmaid, to which the barmaid ran down the stairs just before it happened. As I mentioned, or not sure if I mentioned, I'm pretty sure it was about 3 a.m. he was said to have died. Um, he slumped on a pillar in here and uh, was, was taken out in the early hours. And to this day, there's plenty of stories and rumors that fly about, but usually you're gonna get the best interpretation of the truth from the generations of people that grew up in the East End. And let's remember that the Richardsons were South London villains. So it was supposed to be, you know, in today's world you've got postcode wars, people shooting each other over council houses they don't own. 
I suppose, at least in the past, it was wealthy people arguing over postcodes. To this day, one of the family names lives on, the other one is but uh, something to make films out of. You go into local cafes and they've, they've got pictures of them on the menu, but that's all they are is a distant memory. But it doesn't apply to some other villains of the time and their family line which has gone down. I've got absolutely nothing here. I'm more likely to pot the white. Right, I'm just going to have to... There we go. Oh, easiest... Oh, no! Oh, Vin. Ah, there's your two shots. Bugger. I might just pull this out of the bag. Don't worry, I won't post this game if I lose. Oh, yes. oh I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry I had to go this way. You know, I'm just glad I got it on camera, that's all. Sorry, mate. I'm sorry, mate. It's one of those things, you know. It's one of those things. Now, usually, Vinny Sullivan does not smoke cigarettes whilst he makes documentaries. But here we are, the pub series, ladies and gents. So cut me a bit of slack. And the reason that I've asked us to film outside is this is quite a nice garden, it's a lovely garden, you don't see it coming from the outside and you can see they've got pumps over there but it's ruined by the modern world just behind it, see? I mean it's not ruined because it, it still is what it is but if you turn around you can see the, the old bank there just across the street but to the right is that goddamn bastard ugly hospital what would you rather preserve? This sort of thing? Or that sort of thing? I'd say think for yourself, but if you're doing it by this stage, then I can't help you. Take care.